Hi everyone, hope you're having a good day. Um, I get asked a lot about how you can improve your problem solving skills. Uh, so today I was going to go through a question as an example, and along the way I'm going to talk about uh, different tools that I use. Okay, and I'll recap that at the end of the video. Uh, but let's just jump straight into the, the question and so you get a bit of an understanding of uh, what I mean, okay? So here we have a question from Des. And let's just read the information really quickly. In 1961, there were severe frosts in winter, followed by a hot summer with little rain. As the lizard in this study reaches its maximum breeding potential at age two years, most of the 1961 cohort, as shown in figure one, did not reach breeding potential. 1962 was a more favorable year for breeding and the survivorship curve for the 1962 cohort is shown in figure two. Because these lizards are territorial, young lizards, as shown in figure two, tended to leave the outcrop under the study only to return when they became potential breeders. Figure two shows this migration of animals back to the outcrop. And then we've got figure two, which is just the graph. Um, <clears throat> notice it talks about residents and immigrants. So that's talking about that migratory behavior. Okay. All right, so let's go to the question. The percentage of 1962 cohort who are at the outcrop under the study when they reach their age of maximum breeding potential is closest to. And we look at the options and we're looking for percentages, essentially. Now, if you ask yourself and uh, be honest, how much of what we just read can you remember? Uh, I would say most people don't really recall. Uh, so first of all, we are looking for the percentage, okay? We're looking for the percentage of the 1962 cohort. Now, the important thing is figure two shows us what's happening to the 1962 cohort. So that's kind of irrelevant, okay? So we're essentially looking for the, the percentage of the number of lizards, right? We know it's talking about lizards, okay? So this is one of the first things that I'm gonna talk about, which is to rephrase the problem. See if you can, get rid of words um, if it doesn't change the meaning or replace them, okay? So the number of lizards who are at the outcrop under the study, right? To be honest, all of this can be replaced with the number of lizards, right? What is the percentage of the number of lizards when they reach the age of maximum breeding potential? Okay, what is that? What is the age of maximum breeding potential? If you can answer that straight away, then you're doing really well. Um, most people would have to go back to the text again and read it, okay? So let's go back and see if we can find uh, any key information about that. And if we go very, very early on, it talks about the maximum breeding potential is at the age of two years. So all of that stuff that I've just circled, the age of maximum breeding potential, we can change that to two years of age. So how much easier is that? The question, instead of being the percentage of the 1962 cohort who had the outcrop under the study when they reached the age of maximum breeding potential is closest to, is now the percentage of the number of lizards when they reach the age of two years, okay, or when they reach two years of age is closest to. I don't know about you, but that sounds a little bit easier to digest. So really all it's asking for is, uh, there's a bit of assumed knowledge, which is that if they're the 1962 cohort, they were born in 1962, and the number of lizards at 1962 was 150, compared to when they're two years of age. Now, if you go to 1964, because that's when they would turn two, the number of lizards can be estimated. I'm going to estimate that as being 40. Okay, it's about 40, let's say. Okay, now be careful, don't choose B, because remember we're looking for a percentage, okay? Very easy to thing to do. We're looking for a percentage, so if you wanted to find that as a percentage of what was there to begin with, like the, the number who were born, then it's going to be 40 divided by 150 times 100. We can get rid of the zeros at least, that helps a little bit. Now, four over 15 is not that straightforward. Um, this is where you can estimate uh, 4 over 16 is much easier because I know the answer to that. 
it's a quarter and a quarter of a hundred is 25 so we get C okay I'll summarize at the end but what we have done so far is we have rephrased the problem and it makes it a bit easier to understand what we're looking for okay question four the ratio of slow growers to fast growers from the 1962 cohort who survived two full years from hatching was three to two. All right, so the ratio of slow growers to fast growers. All right, so let's write that down. Slow to fast is three to two, okay? So we've used that. Now that is talking about from the 1962 cohort who survived to two years, two full years. So this is talking about the number of lizards Okay, that uh, survived to two years of age, essentially. Okay, and we've actually kind of talked about that in the previous question. So we know that that number is about 40, let's say, right off the graph. Okay, let's keep on going for a little while. You'll see why it's important. By combining the data for the two-year-olds from the 1962 cohort in figures one and figure two, Okay, now we've used figure two already, so we don't have to worry. Estimate the number of slow growers from the cohort who survived to become three years of age. Okay, now the important thing is, uh, first of all, that cohort. They're talking about the 1962 cohort, just to make sure it's clear. We are looking for slow growers from 1962, okay, that survived to be three years of age. Like this is ultimately what we're looking for, okay? Slow growers from 1962 cohort that go uh, that survived to three years of age. Now we've got some information. We've got information for the number of lizards that survived to two years of age, but we don't know if they are slow growers or if they are fast growers. At least we don't know yet. However, from this ratio, you can see that we can actually split those now because that ratio of three to two is is for the number of lizards that reach two years of age. So how can we um, how can we actually uh, split that up? You can look at the ratio three to two, and you can say, well, that's out of a total of five parts. This is an easy way to do it. Five parts. So what we do is we split this number that we're trying to ratio out to five. So four divided by five is eight. So each part is going to be eight lizards. So if we want three parts, it's gonna be three times eight. So three times eight is 24, and two times eight is 16. So we have effectively split the 40 into two parts, 24 and 16. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm visualizing, okay? So it's really, really important to start writing stuff down on paper. It'll be very difficult to do this in your head. Okay, now, Let's make sure that we focus on what the question is asking. We are looking for slow growers from that cohort, which are three years of age, okay? So we're not interested in fast growers. We're interested in the slow growers, okay? So we've got the number 24, okay? But remember, this is for two-year-olds. So now this is uh, just another visualization trick. So if you're you're trying to extrapolate essentially. So it's good to kind of try, draw a table or some kind of chart. So let's say this is two years of age. This is three years of age. Two years of age, we know there's 24. And this is from the information from figure two. Okay. And essentially we're trying to figure out how many would survive to the age of three. Now we can't figure it out from figure two because it stops at two years of age. That's why we need to use the, the another graph, which is on figure one, which we haven't looked at yet. So let's go to figure one and we'll quickly get some information. Remember, we are looking for the 1962 cohort that are slow growers. Slow growers have a dark or bold line and the 1962 cohort is this. And we're interested in the years two to three because we're trying to extrapolate information from two years to three years. So if we run off the graph for those ages, 
For that particular cohort, remember 1962 cohort that are slow growers, we can see that initially there was a number, let's just say 500, and it goes down to about 50. Okay, I'm, I'm estimating a lot here. And let's put that down on our table to visualize it. <clears throat> so from figure one, it says that if you had 500 two-year-olds, it would go down to about 50. And this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the number of slow growers from the 1962 cohort that are three years of age, okay? So there are a few ways we can go about this. We could extrapolate by looking at the difference, but that's not going to work. We could we'd say 500 to 50 decreases by 450, okay? But then we get a negative number if we took that away from 24. A better way is to look at the factor by which it's changed by. So from 500 to 50, it's gone down by a factor of 10. So if we assume the same for the 24 lizards, if it went down by a factor of 10, it would go down to 2.4. And 2.4, so that's going to be, that's, okay, this is good to reflect now. Uh, that's going to be the number of lizards that are three years of age that are slow growers from the 1962 cohort. And that's B. Okay, so just to reiterate, we have um, used a few tools that you can start using today if you haven't already done so, which is to rephrase the problem where you can. Okay, take phrases and replace them if you can with something that's equivalent. It makes it easy to understand what the question is asking and to please visualize. So write stuff down on paper and it's much easier to see what the trends are like. Okay, I know a lot of people kind of... Um, look at questions and they try to internalize everything they just do things in their head but yeah please put it down on paper and more often than not it'll make the question a lot easier all right so thanks very much and i'll see you next time